Hi there, and welcome to our aquaponics system here at Principia College. My name is Ryan Richardson, and I'm part of the aquaponics team. I'd like to today walk you through our system and show you all the different components, what they do, and where they come from. Aquaponics is much like aquaculture in that our fish are living in a fake environment that we can control. Our tanks that we're using are made from IBC totes, which are approximately 275 gallons. We're only using about a two-thirds of them, but you can use uh, up, to the, up to the top, uh, filling it with water. We got these from a previous owner who had used them to transport uh, food-safe materials. So the wastewater from our fish is piped to our sump tank over here through normal PVC pipe. Our sump tank, along with the rest of our filtration tanks, are made from normal 50-gallon uh, barrels that also were used to transport food-safe materials. After the water gets into the sump tank, it's then piped up into the first filter by a pump that pumps approximately 800 gallons for an hour with this height. The first filter we have in our system is a spiral filter. The water is being piped around the side of the filter, it making a spiral and using centrifugal force to pull the solids out of the wastewater that we can in this barrel. The water that's left over will be piped uh, down the middle and into our next barrel. The next filter we have here is a radial filter. The water is being piped to the bottom of the barrel and then um, flowing up through lava rock that we have filling the barrel. After that, the water goes into this next barrel that you can see, which is filled with uh, plastic netting that we just bought at the harbor store. The water is being piped to the bottom of the barrel and is flowing up. On that net grows a helpful bacteria that uh, naturally will grow in the system. That bacteria takes the nitrites from the water uh, and that the fish are producing and turns it into nitrates, which is exactly what the plants need to survive. Also in our nitrification tank, air rocks in the bottom produce bubbles which get filtered up through the net and uh, assist the bacteria in growing. After the nitrification process, the water filled with nitrates come in, comes into our two plant beds. The first plant bed we have here is a media bed. The media bed is simply filled with this uh, small riverbed gravel that we were able to buy at the hardware store. The, the plants then can, can grow in that gravel just as they would in the normal ground. Some of our plants we found grow better in that. Some of the stockier plants, such as this kale over here, and then our, a lot of our lettuces tend to grow better in our raft bed. The drain process we have in our media bed incorporates this bell siphon that we built. The bell siphon will create a more natural feel for the plants and stress them so that they can grow faster uh, by monitoring the uh, water level of the media bed and up and down repeatedly. The bell siphon will allow the media bed to drain all the way and then turn off and the, the media bed will fill up with water all the way and start the process again. Our lettuces tend to grow better in our raft bed. Our raft bed is a separate growing bed from our media bed and it just has a foam insulation uh, that we've cut out to fit in the bed floating on water uh, which the plants can, can grow on and their roots can, can sink down into the water underneath. There's a couple maintenance issues that we want to go over really quick with you guys. The first is the pump that's sitting in the sump tank. If the pump goes out, you want to always have a replacement pump on hand and replace that ASAP. Uh, always be checking for that. Obviously the water flow will stop if the pump goes out. The second issue we've come across is clogage in the pump pipe here. You want to design your pipe so that the, it can be dismantled and any clogage can be hosed out. As with the pumps, the air rocks and the electronic air pumps that are attached to them should be replaced if they go out. Um, you can see the air rocks at all times and you'll know if the air stops bubbling out of them. 
Another issue we've seen is cloggage in the main drain pipe. If this happens and uh, waste starts to build up in the tanks themselves, what you can do is shut off the opposing tank. Water will build up in the opposing tank. Then when you turn it back on after about 15 minutes, the water will flush uh, the pipes back out, reversing them, and uh, unclog them. We were seeing that our plants weren't getting enough sunlight, so we added in this artificial grow light in order to give them photosynthesis during the night. Another step in caring for your system is every two weeks, you'll want to drain the wastewater out of the filters. To do this, you're simply going to open the drain at the bottom and wait for the water to become clear. Once the water is clear coming out of the system, you can turn it off and use that wastewater to water other plants in the greenhouse. If all these components work the way they should, they'll come out with healthy, tasty produce and fish.